All right, hey there, everybody. Today we're going to be going through 10-ish things that I wish I knew before I started development with Unity. So let's get into it. Hey there. So today we're going to be talking about a whole list of things that I wish I knew before I started doing any kind of Unity development. Uh, these are in no specific kind of order. I do have some notes about specific things I want to go over, but uh, we're going to be talking about these kind of all over the place. I've included a link in the description down below to a PDF that has kind of all these thoughts a little more organized than I'm probably going to go through today because I have a tendency to not be super organized when I'm talking about things off, uh, off the top of my head. So, all right. So first and foremost, uh, what I want to talk about is using these tools up here. So if you take a look in the upper left hand corner, you have a hand tool, which allows you to pan around in your scene view, a move tool, which allows you to move any components you might need to move. You have a rotation tool, which allows you to rotate. This is a scale tool. This is the rect tool. And then this is the um, kind of combo tool. Now, all of these tools can be swapped between by using a hotkey on your keyboard. Uh, Q will choose the hand, W will choose the transform tool, which allows you to move stuff around. E, for some reason, I don't know why, chooses rotate, R chooses scale, and then T chooses the rect tool. So let's take a look at using these. So in my art folder here, that I created in the last video, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a new object. So the object I'm gonna create, just so I can have something to actually look at, is gonna be called a sprite. A sprite is a generic term for any kind of art that is used in 2D, something that has no, no width to it. Well, I guess it has width, it has no depth to it. So for this case, I'm gonna make a sprite that is just a square. And it allows you to make a name for the square, but I'm not gonna give it any name. I'm just gonna pull it into my scene here just by grabbing it directly from my project bar and just pulling it directly into my scene. Now the rec tool you can see adds these little blue dots that allows you to kind of grab and pull. Now I'm gonna just uh, control Z to undo what I did. <laughs> this is Yoda. She's uh, an unofficial mascot of the channel. She comes and says hi sometimes, so you might see her some more. Anyway, uh, so I can use uh, these tools. So if I go to Q, this will allow me to pan around. W allows me to have the transform tool so I can move this up, down, left, right. Uh, e is the rotation tool, which doesn't do a ton in 2D. But you can see I'm kind of rotating it around. If I pop into 3D, so up here in the scene view, if I click where it says 2D, I can now see this in 3D. There she is, isn't she cute? I'm gonna undo that though. Go back to 2D. Uh, if I use the scale tool, which is uh, R, again, I don't know why, I can change scale on separate axes. Uh, and if I go to T, I can use the rect tool. So those are really good hotkeys to get used to using. Now also, if I go back to my transform tool using W, I can move this around, but it's really imprecise. You can see over here in my squares inspector, in the transform, that this is moving by these kind of messy decimal values. If you want this to move by nicer values, if you hold down control, you can see it snaps to specific values. And you can set those snap settings by going to uh, edit, and then snap settings is directly in here. Okay. Oh, there it is, grid and snap settings. It's the very last one. All right. And you can change this for your increment snap. So currently my increment, increment snap is 0 0.25. If I make that by one, then if I hold down control, this is gonna move by one every time. So currently it's at 0 0.14, 1.14, 2.14. And you can do the same thing with the rotation or with the scale. So if you hold down control, you can use your snap and your snap settings can be configured at any time under edit, grid, and snap settings. All right, uh, next, if you want to grab Let's duplicate our square here. Uh, you can duplicate things at any time by pushing either Control D if you're on a Windows machine or Command D if you're on a Mac. And for that grid snapping, that's Command if you're on a Mac, just so you know. Um, all right, so I've got my two different squares here. Now, let's say I want this square to line up exactly with the edge of that one. If I hold down Control, you can see it doesn't quite, it kind of overlaps a bit, which isn't great, especially if I start off with this kind of not being at all 
in sync with the other one. So if I want them to snap together, I can hold down V, and this allows me to go either to the center or one of the vertices. And if I hold down V, I can then use this to snap it to another vertex on that other, on that other square. And so V is incredibly important for vertex snapping mode. So control for snapping in general, V for vertex snapping. All right, um, docking windows. So your windows don't have to be where they are when uh, Unity default sets them somewhere. You can put your windows anywhere you want to. In fact, when I just made that grid snap settings window, I could have docked that right down here, and then this would allow me to change my grid and snap settings. I could also, if I don't like it here, <laughs> Uh, put it over there. I could put it here. I could put it there. This can go pretty much anywhere you want it to. Unity is pretty, pretty flexible about that. And you can have it free floating again just by kind of putting it in the center of the screen, not near anything, and it'll make it free floating. All right. Um, let's see what next. So align game object with view. This is useful a lot when you're dealing with the camera. So especially in 3D, if you have your scene view, pretty much where you want the camera to be, you could go and mess around with the camera and put it to a pretty much where you want it to be. Or uh, if you select the camera game object, and if I want it to move to where my scene view is right now, where I'm kind of zoomed in here, I can go to game object and then align with view. And you can see that it realigned over here. This is incredibly helpful if you're doing a 3D project because oftentimes you'll have just the right view in the scene view and trying to get your camera to have the same view is maddening. So game object aligned with view. Okay, so next is locking the inspector. So if I wanna do something like say, for example, I wanna change a property of this square specifically. If I click away from it or I click on something else, the square goes away from the inspector. That can be kind of frustrating. So one thing that you can do, there's this little lock up here that you can use to lock it so that now whatever you look at, it's going to have the inspector over here is going to have just that first square that we looked at. One thing to be cautious of with this is to make sure that you unlock your inspector again when you're done with it. All right, another one here is applying a tint to play mode. By default, and Unity is doing this for me because it knows uh, from my previous settings what it should do. But if you hit play, any changes that you make in here, let's say you put this position of this square to be like 7.1, or just seven. Any changes that you make when the game is in play mode are not going to go back when you go out of play mode. And so, First time Unity developers often struggle with that because you'll get things exactly how you want it, not realize you're in play mode, and then go out of play mode and everything is back where it was before you started putting everything where you wanted it. So one thing that's helpful to do is to add a tint to the inspector while you're in play mode. Uh, to do this in uh, Windows machine, you want to go to edit and preferences. And if you're using a Macintosh, it's under Unity and then preferences. And then in here, under colors, you can find a play mode tint. Now I like to have it be something that has a relatively low alpha value, so it's not 100% blocking everything. I also like it to be kind of a non-obtrusive color. So there we go. Uh, let's see, what's next? So next is the three dots on components can be used to remove the component, reset it to its original values, copy it, or you can move it up or down. It cannot be put higher than the transform though. So that's one thing that is really helpful to do. So if you wanna copy the values of one component and paste them onto another, um, let's see, let's change something here. Let's hit, uh, let's change the color. So if I want this other uh, square to have exactly the same color, instead of trying to find it or making a palette or using the eyedropper, what I can do is, copy the component, go back to the other square, and then choose paste component values. So that can be incredibly helpful, especially if you're new. All right, so this next one is something that we won't deal with for quite a while, but uh, when you have a UI canvas, so if I add a new object by right clicking my sample scene, I'm gonna add a new UI canvas. The UI canvas by default 
takes up a huge part of your scene and it can be a little distracting, especially if you have UI in the lower left hand corner or UI that might overlap your game. Now, to make sure that the UI is something that is still exists, but you can't necessarily see in the scene view, you can go up here to the layers tab and you can choose to not see anything in the UI. You can do this for other layers as well, but I find it incredibly helpful for the UI by turning the uh, eye off. Uh, okay, this one seems to go without saying. However, you have no idea how many students I've seen with this exact issue. So when you're making names for things, so these squares, uh, you want to make sure that you're making good names for them. So if the square that's over here on the left is supposed to be a specific character, you want to give it a good name. So let's say um, left square. And instead of leaving this one to be square one, you want to give it a good name. Call it right square. Now let's say you're going to have a whole bunch of these squares though. So on top of having good names, you can see how the hierarchy can get cluttered pretty fast. And I'm just going to move these around just so that they're kind of spread out all over here, just to make my point. You can see how the hierarchy is getting incredibly cluttered already. And this is something that only gets worse the bigger your project is. So to make this be a little less cluttered and a little less, um, I don't know, difficult to find exactly what you're looking for, you cannot add a folder to the hierarchy because that's not what the hierarchy is for. The hierarchy is there to kind of organize game objects that are in the scene. So you can't add a folder to it. But what you can do is under your sample scene, right click, you can make a new game object as an empty game object. And you can use this as if it were a folder for everything. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure that this game object isn't made with some strange coordinate like this one was. Now, if it's the transform, you can just choose reset and now it's at zero, 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 which is good. I can now pull all of my square objects directly into that game object and I can rename it to be something like squares. So this game object now is going to be, and now that they're all children, meaning they're part of this empty game object, I can collapse or expand it whenever I need to. This can be incredibly helpful, especially if you're going to have a lot of objects on your scene at once. Um, okay, next, you want to make sure that you are trying to look ahead as much as you can when you're making your folders. Uh, for example, here I have art, I have scenes. If I made another folder that was just like player, or another folder that was effects or something like that. Those could maybe be part of another bigger folder so that I can kind of keep this main assets folder as organized as I possibly can and try to never ever put anything in this main assets folder that is just a random file because you will 100% forget where it is. So you wanna to try to make sure that you're using your folder structure as effectively as you can. All right, so let's say that you want to try and find something. You're looking way over here in your scene and you want to zoom in on a specific square. So I want to zoom in specifically on left square seven. If I highlight it and double click or press the F key, if it's in 3D, then my view will immediately go directly to that. So that's definitely a good thing that you want to, you want to find out. All right, next, uh, if you want to maximize or minimize any window, if you mouse over it and then press shift space, it will maximize or minimize the window that you've moused over. So if you wanna maximize the asset store, I guess I don't, oh, okay. It's freaking out because I'm trying to use the asset, the, the internet while I'm recording. Um, but if you wanna say maximize your project folder, it's shift space. And next is if you want to enter or exit play mode without having to reach up to that play button, if you hit control P, that will automatically enter or exit you from play mode. All right, so that's 10. I'm pretty sure there was more than 10. I'm gonna label it 10 things that I wish I knew about Unity before I got started, uh, just for search engine optimization, but I'm pretty sure there was more than 10. Maybe there was less than 10. I'm not sure. Uh, I have a PDF of all of this stuff listed in the description down below. So yeah, thank you. All right, thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there if you did learn something. You can share this to your social media platform if you think somebody you know might want to learn it. Uh, you can click the bell icon, just, just go nuts on those buttons down there. 
There's so many buttons. Why not try pushing them all? Except for maybe dislike. You know, maybe maybe leave that one alone. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you open up the description, uh, you can see that I have provided links to my Patreon, uh, where if you want to check in a buck to make sure these videos keep coming, you sure can. My Discord channel, where not just me, but other people are chatting every day, kind of helping people out who are trying to learn this whole trade. Uh, you can find my itch.io page where I have some assets and some general frameworks. And yeah, there's also some kind of general use links down there. So feel free to check out that description. Otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. <laughs>